Today on an all new Dr. Phil, a daughter happy with her habit. At age 13, you start doing heroin. A mother who enables her. You give her money knowing she's going to spend it on drugs. Is she a sucker? Oh, yeah. And a father who up and left her. I went six months. It's been a year and a half. I told you what happened. I told Did you. Did you come out here to lecture her or to figure out how to save her life? Because you bailed on her, buddy. Let's do it. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. I hate to see people suffering, and you've hurt long enough. Stand by, Dr. Bill. Wait a second. I'm going to get you the help that you need. In five, four, This is going to be a changing day in your life. pictures that you are looking at of drug paraphernalia were proudly posted on Instagram by this young woman. 17-year-old Brianna says, so what? I'm not using major drugs, and she does not understand why her mother, Diane, is making such a big deal about her admitted use of Xanax, Molly, marijuana, PCP, heroin, and alcohol. Diane says her daughter used to be a star gymnast, but now excels in lying, running away, and taking drugs. At her wit's end, Diane recently stood before a judge to force Brianna into a youth shelter in an effort to scare her daughter straight. Let's listen to some of the audio of what happened on the ride over to that facility. So you put me in these places for no reason. They're pointless. I don't need it. I want to do drugs. I'm going to do them. Just let me live my life. Shut up! Shut the up! Well, Brianna was released from the shelter last week, but Diane says her daughter hasn't changed not one bit. Take a look. My daughter, Brianna's out of control. Hey, you don't have anything to do with me, my mom. Shut the up! My daughter drinks. She abuses drugs. She does not listen to authority. She is a chronic liar. She's a chronic runaway. Her drug use started in ninth grade, and it just got progressively worse over the years. She wasn't going to school. She was acting out, and she pulled a knife on my ex-husband. Over the last year, Brianna started dropping Molly, which is a pure form of ecstasy. She has dropped Xanax and drank on top of that, and it's just been a living hell for me. I found a lot of this stuff out by reading Brianna's journal, and then when I confronted her with it, she told me, yeah, that's exactly what I do. I had found out that Brianna was going to parties, sneaking out at night. Brianna had explained to me in detail how she did heroin. She told me she melted it, and then she shot it under her toenails. She drinks sometimes to the point where she blacks out. Brianna started having sex at the age of 14. She has slept with anybody from a 14-year-old all the way up to a 24-year-old, and she's only 17 years old. I asked Brianna who she's getting the money from to get the drugs, and she said to me, you don't need money to get drugs all the time. I would say she was doing sexual stuff, so she can get drugs for free. She has run away five times. Last week, Brianna went missing. I called the police. Brianna comes walking in the house, glassy-eyed, and the cop put her into a bear hug, and she was punching him and screaming, get off of me. They lifted her up to carry her out the door. She turns to me and goes, I hope you get killed in a car accident. She lives in and out of rehab. The judge ordered her to go to the shelter. And I turn to Brianna to say something. She goes, screams on the top of her lungs. Shut up! Shut the up! I feel like I have done everything for this girl, but nothing seems to work. I am at wit's end. Okay, you say you're at your wit's end, which I just have to tell you, I'm sorry that's not an option, but nonetheless, how serious do you take this? How serious do you think this is? Oh, this is very serious. Uh, if I don't get help for her, she's going to die. Okay, where die. have you been in all of this? She started smoking dope at 10? She says around 10 years old. Okay, where were you? I didn't know, I didn't see any signs, nothing until high school until high school. Okay, she was doing heroin at 13. This is what she says. She's well, I a chronic I understand. Liar. I'm just saying, do you, you don't believe her? No. So you don't think she was smoking dope at 10 and doing heroin at 13? No. What do you assess the risk to be right now to her? That she's going to die. She's going to die. Okay. 
She just doesn't, she doesn't get it. She wants me to let her live her life. But what I need to know is, do you? You're saying she doesn't get it. I want to know, do you get it? Because you don't act like you get it. I get it. That's why I'm here. Dr. Fowler, I, I, there's nothing more I can do for her. I don't know what to do for her. Okay, 17-year-old Brianna says her mother is completely overreacting. <laughs> I obviously disagree. I think she is completely underreacting. She says she's just living a partying lifestyle, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, this is what teens do. Let's hear what she has to say. When my parents got divorced, I always blamed myself. The most painful part was my dad was gone. I didn't see him for years, and that's why I blamed myself, that he didn't want to see me. I felt very abandoned because all of a sudden he was gone. I tried to take away the pain, and I thought hanging myself would work. But I didn't want to die. I started smoking weed when I was 10. I started using heroin when I was 13. My behavior started to change totally. And I just got myself into trouble. I would fight with the teachers. I've hit the principal because I was on drugs. I've been having unprotected sex, but it's only with one person. But when I was doing heavier drugs, I would just sleep around. I laced my weed with angel dust, PCP, and took Molly at the same time. Mixing them together, I felt amazing. I wanted to punish my mom because it was her idea to get the divorce. So I did the drugs to get her mad while I'm being happy. I always say, I hate you. I hope you die. I do drugs because I love it. It's like a daily routine for me. It's what I do, and the way I look at it is, if you don't like what I do, don't bother with me. My mom always says I'm not ready to bury you yet, and it just, it gets me so mad. And I try to explain to her, I'm like, Mom, I'm not gonna die. You think she's just being histrionic, just overreacting? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's getting to the point where it's really, really frustrating and annoying. Really annoying for yes. her to parent you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So how do you feel about being here today? I think it's pointless because I'm still going to go out and smoke weed. Okay. So no matter what I say or what I do, your attitude is you're going to just keep doing what you're doing? Yeah. Okay. Because, that, see, that's really important to me. And I'll tell you why that's important to me. Because... I don't ask myself why you're doing what you're doing. I ask myself why not. I mean, I, I may be the only person in your life right now that has an appreciation for what all you've been through. Yeah. I, I get that. I really do. And I'm really sorry. But it's interesting to me for you to say, no matter what you do, I'm going to continue to do what I'm doing. Because that tells me where this game's going to be played. You know, you want to you want to raise it to that level? I'll meet you right there. I'd rather work with you like an intelligent young woman, but if you want to just bow up and put your little bitchy hat on, uh, just like, hell, I'm going to do what I want to do. I don't care what you people say. Uh, I'll, I'll match you step for step. I can stop like all the other drugs. I've been three years clean of heroin. Mm -hmm. And I don't need to do Molly. I don't need to do Xanax. But like, I can stop all that and just smoke weed. You say at age 10, you started smoking marijuana, mm -hmm. right? Okay, at age 13, you started doing heroin. Mm -hmm. At age 16, you started doing PCP. You, you laced marijuana with it. You, you sprinkle mm -hmm. it in there and then, and then do it. You currently smoke five to ten joints a day? Yeah. Uh, you take three or four Xanax a day? Mm, only on the weekends, but I haven't done that. Okay, and on weekends, that's when you do the, the ecstasy, the molly? Yeah. Uh, you drink? Yeah. You, you say you drink four or five beers a day? Not a day. If I go to a party or something, yeah, I'm going to drink. Yeah. Sometimes some vodka? Mm hmm Yeah. How are you doing in school? I don't know. I get home instruction. I'm not getting it done right now. Why did you do that? Because a lot of her problems were happening in the high school. Uh -huh. She go to the high school. She, I got a call. She brought beer to school. I mean, I couldn't have her being in that high school anymore, so I took her out. You thought the 
the thing to do here is we'll just stop education. No, 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 no. Take her out of the school and have her home instruction, have home instruction put into place. Because you say she went in this homeschool program, but from what I understand it, it was like she'd blow it off, say, I don't want to do this. I confronted her about it, and she was like, oh, I just didn't feel like going, or I'm done. I'm just so done with all of this. D is she a sucker? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I don't. No, I, it was an honest answer. <laughs> you, you sucker her, right? You manipulate yeah. her. Mm -hmm. She's very manipulative. Brianna's father says his inability to be 100% in Brianna's life is not entirely his fault. So we're going to add him to the conversation when we come back. Brianna just turned into a complete nightmare. She threatened to kill me. She said she would actually stab me. At that time, if she did have a knife, and being that she was on drugs, she probably would have stabbed me. And later, she says you're a flat-out racist and that you were using the N-word and being derogatory about someone because of their race. Don't no. give me that. You guys can all go f*** yourselves. Monday on an all-new Dr. Phil. Jim choked me, slammed me. You know exactly how I'm going to react. His rage is destroying their family. You said that you do hit the kids, but I don't kick across the room. Is he a bully? I don't have a perfect memory of what happened. Do you remember anything? Because everything I've asked you, I don't recall. I'm not sure. Or do they both love the drama? He'll punch you or hit you or slap you. Fifteen minutes later, you're cuddling up on the couch watching TV. That's Monday. says her 17-year-old daughter, Brianna, thinks it's no big deal to do marijuana, molly, heroin, and prescription drugs. Now, Brianna has run away at least five times, and now things are so bad that her mom says she checks dumpsters looking for her daughter's dead body. Diane says her ex-husband, Michael, abandoned his daughter after the divorce, and she feels that contributed to her daughter's downward spiral. So let's hear what Michael has to say. Brianna is way out of control with her drug use. Brianna has a lot of anger because of the divorce. It made her do a lot of things that she wouldn't have done if I would have been there. Diane makes it very hard for me to be a father to her. The only time Diane wants me involved is when she gets to the point that she can't handle it on her own. These drugs are destroying Brianna. She just turned into a complete nightmare. I want to do drugs. I'm going to do it. Just let me live my life. When Brianna is high, Brianna is a changed person. She's nasty, curses at people. She's just out of control. Brianna threatened to kill me. She said she would actually stab me. And I feel if at that time, if she did have a knife, and being that she was on drugs, she probably would have stabbed me. About three weeks ago, Brianna started going off about how she hates her mother's gut. She wishes she was dead. You can drop this, Brianna. Shut up! Shut the f up! If Brianna is high and she doesn't like what you're saying and she doesn't get her way, I think Brianna, without a doubt, could hurt somebody very easily with stabbing, hitting them with something, kicking them, or punching them. And that's just the way she is when she's on drugs. Brianna's not gonna learn from me because her mother's letting her do the things that I don't want her to do. The amount of drugs that she has told me she has consumed, my biggest fear is that someone's gonna call me, say, we found your daughter dead. How worried about that are you? I am very afraid that someone is going to call me and say that they had found her dead. These drugs are destroying this child. She is one of the greatest kids you will ever meet in your life. She will give you the shirt off her back. She'll do anything for you. When she's high, she becomes a monster. She screams at you. She'll tell you she wishes she were dead. She would think nothing of taking a knife and stabbing you. She's already t said it to me. She said it to her uh, stepfather. And I'm very surprised she hasn't said it to Diane. 
Okay, what is your ownership in all of this? Oh, I own up to all of this. If I was there more, she probably wouldn't be doing this. Because you know what she told us? She said, I was a daddy's girl. Absolutely. And when he left her, he also left me. That's not true. That's not true because... You're kidding me, right? No, because when... Did Dunny you go a year and a half without talking to her? No. I went about six months. It's been a year and a half. Exactly a year and a half that I've talked to you. Really? And I was told something totally different that you say you weren't allowed to see me. Okay. When, when you were younger. Okay. We talked. I told you what happened. I told you what I said to you, what your mother said to you, probably were two different things. We had our own problems. Or did you come out here to lecture her, or did no. you come out here to figure out how to save her life? Because you her bailed her on life. her, buddy. No, uh, you said yeah, you I did. did. Right. Yeah. Don't you come out here and be self-righteous and start lecturing this girl when you tell me you did bail on I her. I did. I told you that. I then told what you the that. hell are you doing? I am what, trying what are you to people I thinking? I am trying to explain to her that I know for a fact if I was there more, I would have been, she wouldn't be doing the things that she was doing. But you were. I wasn't. And I the, think about that all the time. And I do blame myself. And I wish, and I know I can't go back, but I wish I could because it would be different. It's not, I can't, and I want to go forward. I want this child to get the help she needs. I would always see them fighting. And they were like, oh, well, we're not fighting. We're not fighting. Everything's okay. We're just talking. But, like, I was always there. I always, like, heard it. So it's like they're fighting because of me. Tell me about the discussions you had with yourself about hanging yourself when this happened. Well, I, I went to do it. And in my head, I was like, why make everyone else suffer? But for that, you would have hanged yourself. Yeah. What do you want to say? I wanted to just make it clear the reason that her father was not allowed to see her was because he was also on drugs himself. He was on painkillers. You had back surgery. Yes, I have had two back surgeries. And you were taking? I take Oxycontin and I still take Percocet. Take it? Yes, I do. I have to. I can't walk without it. So you got addicted to prescription drugs? Absolutely, yeah. Because Are you addicted I didn't have to it. them now? Oh, I am. Did you say to her, and I quote, long as Brianna is doing drugs and dating ends, I'll have nothing to do with her. I said if Brianna's doing drugs, I want nothing to do with her. You guys can all go f*** themselves. This May on Dr. Phil. Dr. Phil was the first to interview House of Horrors survivor Michelle Knight. Now, she will appear here in front of a live studio audience. New revelations. After eight months, you saw yourself in the mirror. What did you see? I didn't see me. Her new life. I don't feel like I'm trapped in a cage anymore. Plus, inside the secret journals Michelle kept as she lay chained to a bed. Coming this May on Dr. Phil. Did you kick her out in April of 12? Um, actually, I didn't kick her out. Brianna decided not to follow. She the... said you kicked her out because she was dating a Brianna black Brianna came home. There were three guys in a car in front of my house. Brianna came in, said, Dad, I'm going out with my friends. It wasn't three guys. It was my friend. It was a girl and two guys. Me, my boyfriend, her, and her boyfriend. Did Love you to say to her, and I quote, Long as Brianna is doing drugs and dating ends, I'll have nothing to do with her. I said, if Brianna's doing drugs, I want nothing to do with her when she's doing the drugs. That's not I all said, you said. She says you're a flat out racist at? and that you were using the N word and being derogatory about someone because of their race. 
Yeah. Yeah. Mostly because and of that's the drugs, not the race. You're I do that. I do that with everybody when they're doing drugs. Don't yeah. give me that. You know, whatever. Yeah, whatever. Whatever. I, whatever. I, you know what? Yeah. Whatever. You guys can all go themselves. It had nothing. It was the drugs. Y'all notice she left? Yes. I didn't want to share because you, you didn't. But Dr. Phil, she does this all the time. Yeah, I know. Unfortunately, this is what yeah, Brianna does. I know does. she does it all the time, and I'll bet it's because you do this all the time. Yeah. That I will tell her I don't want her on drugs. I don't want her with people doing drugs. She put, again, Brianna's telling you there was a girl in a the car. There was no girl in a the car. There were three guys in the car. She gets on a phone with mom, she says. She gets off the phone. She says, mom said it was okay. I said, yeah, Brie, no. even if mom said it was okay, that's not the point. The point is, you are living here under our rules this time. You leave this tell, house. Tell me what your objective is in telling me this right now. But I'm just explaining to you. They're telling you okay, something, my, and I'm telling my question. you. I'm asking you a, a question. I'm not trying to no, be disrespectful. I'm, I'm trying I admit to I'm interrupting to you, you, but I'm asking you why you're explaining it to me. What's your objective? There's what no you... objective, but she goes out and this don't, is what she does. Don't do something to get with on. no objective. Is what what is your objective for giving me this speech right now? Is I want you to know the people that she is going out with are the ones that she's doing drugs with. What, do you think she's going to go get three choir boys and say y'all... No, I didn't say she had to be with choir boys. I mean, they hang boys. together, right? Druggies hang together, Absolutely, right? Absolutely, Brianna So you want to spend them. your time telling me what mm -hmm. I obviously know? You know, know? that. Absolutely. Uh, you think? Yeah, absolutely. I, nope. I, get it. I, get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. And I'm just asking you, is this how you want to spend your time? No. I want to spend my time figuring out a way to get Brianna clean and get Brianna the help she needs. Do you two understand this is not just about Brianna? Yes. Oh, absolutely not. This is about a dysfunctional family. And yes, let me tell is. you, 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 go, you go look up dysfunctional family in, in the psychiatric in journal. And your close-ups are there. Absolutely. Seriously, you enable her. I mean, you give her money knowing she's going to spend it on drugs. I don't know why she says I give her money. What do I get? I don't give her money. Okay, I give her money. <laughs> Dr. Phil, I've given her money too, and I, and I knew it, and I've given her money too, so. Let me tell you what this little girl has told us. Okay. She has said, I, I am a daddy's girl, daddy's and it girl. broke my heart when he left. It broke my heart. Then he wouldn't talk to me, and I didn't understand why. Didn't understand why. And then if I do something he doesn't like, he, he pouts. He, he'd go like six months without talking to me. And then he's high half the damn time. I come home, he's passed out on the couch in there. It's like, come on. And by the way, when I was in practice, my specialty was brain and central nervous system. Mm -hmm. I dealt with chronic pain in a behavioral medicine clinic. Had one of the first pain clinics in the United States of America. And you're taking 80 milligrams of Oxycontin four times a day. No. I'm telling you, crazy. It's actually twice a day. Uh, twice yeah, a day. Yeah, it's still too much. Come on. I understand say, that. It gets but... to the point where it exacerbates your pain. You are lying to yourself. Oh, no, I know for a fact that my, that my back hurts more because it wants the narcotic in my body. And I understand that, but I don't take the narcotics. I try not to. All right, look, we're going to take a break, and I I'm going to talk to uh, Brianna here um, because... I think she has a lot going on. I think she has a lot uh, to say. I, I, I want to hear what it is. We'll be right back. How am I doing on reading your situation? Really good. <laughs> really good. I mean, for an old bald guy. Honestly, I don't think I need to improve on anything in my life because I'm doing what I love to do. I don't think I need help, but I know everyone else thinks I do. I think I'm pretty fine. 17-year-old Brianna says she doesn't need help uh, because she's just living the life of a partying teen. I mean, look, come on, it's what teens do, right? That's her point. Her parents, Diane and Michael, are desperate to get her to stop using drugs like PCP, Molly and heroin. Now, just before the break, 
uh, Brianna got really frustrated and walked off. I was so close to going with you. Um, <laughs> frankly. Um, <laughs> first time in 12 years, I thought, Come, let's go. Um, and I, and I, I mean, no disrespect to no, your parents. Yeah. It's just the manner in which they're communicating. Yeah. I, I know... I know two things for sure, and one is that your parents love you very much. Yeah, I they know. don't know how to do everything that they're doing that they need to do, but they love you very much. And the yeah. fact that they're here, the fact that they wrote this letter, that your mother's here, that, that your father is here, they, I mean, come on, dad to dad, I, I, I get, I know that you care, you just don't know what you're doing. No. You're, it, you're in over your I, head here, and you know I, it. I'm here to get her help. Y'all are out of, you're out of tricks here, and you're really frustrated. You know, I, I wrote down some things that I wanted to talk to you about. This is my organization. Um, and I, I want to show you the first thing I wrote down, that this is B for Brianna. You've been through a lot. I, I, I get that. I, I really do. I, I, I've been married 37 years, and so we've not had a divorce for our children. Uh, but almost every one of their friends came from a divorced home, and I watched how they reacted and responded. And I've counseled so many families across the years, and they're, they're so hungry for so many things that they don't get. And... If you can read my scribbling, what's the next line I wrote down here? Don't ask why she doesn't... No, wait. don't, don't ask, ask why, why. self-destructive. I ask why not. Okay. That was the note to me. I, I wrote to myself, I don't ask why you're behaving in a self-destructive way. I ask why not. Why, it, it logically follows because you, you've run out of coping skills. You, you get to a point where you don't know how to deal with it. But there's one thing that we know for sure is you can numb it. Yep. If you take a drug or you smoke some dope and it either numbs the emotional pain or even gives you an illusion of high, that beats the hell out of dealing with the realities, right? Yep. That's why I say I don't ask myself why. I ask myself, why not? Mm -hmm. I mean, you're a child that doesn't have it, and the next thing I wrote down was needs new coping skills. Divorced at nine, why did you feel it was your fault? You answered that. You wanted to hang yourself. You answered that. I, I, I've gone through all of this. I say, mom's enabling, dad's withdrawn. He just bails. And the chaos and confusion, no predictability to what your life is going to be. That's what I've written down so far. How am I doing on reading your situation? Really good. <laughs> really good. I mean, for an old bald guy. <laughs> You're doing good. Um, I, I mean, I, I get it. She drinks to a blackout level with these drugs, with the prescription drugs. I, in my opinion, she's playing Russian roulette. Absolutely, you, you could die. Monday on an all-new Dr. Phil. Those screaming and fighting is every day. His rage. He'll punch you or hit you or slap you. Is destroying their family. Why do you not walk away? Have you two gotten to where you thrive on this drama? That's Monday. Uh, I want to tell you something that, that you don't know. I'm going to pull up our new doctor on demand app here and what i'm using here by the way it's the new app that jay and i have created that allows you to type in your symptoms and then video chat with a board certified physician in minutes what you're looking at right now is dr saba huck uh dr huck are you there hello uh, i'm wanting you to talk to brianna and what i need you to do is hold that phone right there so she can Hi, see Brianna. you. Hi, how are you? And one of the things I'm concerned about is we have a 17-year-old girl here that is smoking marijuana laced with PCP, 
and mm -hmm. uh, is also drinking, and she's doing ecstasy, or Molly actually, a purer form of, of ecstasy. What effect do, do these drugs and toxins have on a 17-year-old brain? Absolutely, your, your brain is still growing. It's still actually developing. It's actually shrinking. It's actually becoming more efficient. And it goes until about 25 years old. So it's, your brain's still not, it's still in rough draft mode right now. And what these drugs are doing is they're actually either slowing down or actually stopping that development. And if you continue into your 20s, if your time is up at that point, you've got permanent damage to your brain. And there would still be problems, in my opinion, if your brain was through mm -hmm. forming itself, but it's not. And that's what the doctor is telling you. Okay, then the second thing that I'm really mm -hmm. interested in is she is also on anti-seizure drugs. And okay. what is the effect of mixing these, these street drugs with these prescription anti-seizure agents? They're sedatives also. They can make you feel like you're in a fog sometimes, make you a little drowsy. You mix the street drugs with it, it's double whammy. You're double sedation. You can actually get to the point where you're so drowsy and so knocked out. You're falling, you're hitting your head, you're, you know, you're not quite functional. That's one part of it. The other thing is some of the other drugs you're taking, whether it's PCP or alcohol, they lower what they call your seizure threshold, meaning it makes your brain more prone to seizures than it naturally is. And so it allows the medicines not to work. So you've got, you've got two things going on. Not only are you over sedated, you're also having to shoot seizures in the process as well. That's pretty dangerous stuff to mix those drugs together. Okay, so doctor, when we say we're over sedated and if she gets mm -hmm. to the point where she blacks out and you have gotten to the point uh -huh. of blacking out, correct? Yeah. She drinks to a blackout level with these drugs, with the prescription drugs. I, in my opinion, she's playing mm -hmm. Russian roulette. Absolutely, you, you could die. Okay, what do you think about what she's saying to you here? I never really thought anything of it until like I actually talked to a doctor. Like hearing all of that like scares me. Yeah, it should scare you because what you could be doing is damage to your brain that will be there when you're 30 and 40 and 50. What should scare you is that you are mixing drugs that in combination without any intention whatever could cause you to shut down and, and die. That's very important. Yes. Dr. Huck, we're gonna mm -hmm. let you go. Thank you so much for weighing in on this. Very, very helpful. Um, now, if, um, if, if you at home want to have your own doctor on demand, it's a new app that Jay and I created. You can go to Google Plays or the App Store and download the Doctor On Demand app. It's just that simple. You push the button and you're talking to a board certified physician. You don't have to leave your house. You don't have to get dressed. You don't have to go to the doctor's office. You don't have to wait. So as we use it here, it's a, it's a great asset for us and was helpful to you to talk to her, right? Yes. All right, when we come back, I'm going to talk about where do we go from here, what do we do now? Because I do believe she is at risk. We'll be right back. Hey, Dr. Phil here. Did you know that more than 16 million kids in the U.S. are at risk of hunger each day? Join me and visit feedingamerica.org slash hunger to find your local food bank to help. I'm Dr. Phil, and together, we are Feeding America. We can't do this show without you, our studio audience. If you're going to be in the Los Angeles area and you would like free tickets, go to drphil.com and click on Be in the Audience. Because we have a lot of fun here, don't we? Or you can call 323-461-PHIL. That's 323-461-7445. When Brianna goes running away, I do call the police, but on my own, I go searching in dumpsters looking for her body. It's very terrifying to think that I may find her or somebody's gonna knock on the door, the policeman's here for me to identify her. I don't even wanna think about it. Diane and her ex-husband, Michael, are worried that their 17-year-old daughter, Brianna, will die from a lethal mix of prescription seizure medication and the street drugs that she uses, including Molly, marijuana, and even Xanax. Michael's fiance, Wendy, is also here. Take a look. Being around Brianna, there is always tension. There is always drama that follows her. There's always arguments. 
I am sometimes scared to have her around my other kids. Brianna is a, a fighter and she would start arguments. I get angry about her behavior. I have tried to talk to Brianna about her choices and doing drugs. She has told me that you're not my mother. I don't need to talk to you. There's nothing you can do for me. Brianna is manipulative. She would pit her parents against each other, try to get them to fight so that way she could get her way. I do place some blame on Diane for not letting Michael be more involved and allow to make tougher decisions for Brianna. She thinks her way is the right way and she wants to continue to be very close to Brianna. Diane is trying to be more of a friend to Brianna than a mother. Brianna is out of control and I'm not sure that we can help her. Wendy, I'm glad you're here because you're one of the adults involved in this situation. You, you get why I'm so concerned, right? Absolutely. Do you want a relationship with him? Yes, definitely. Why? Because he's my dad and I love him. I don't want to lose him again. What do you need from him that you're not getting? I just need him to be there. You know, Dr. Frank Lawless is chairman of our Dr. Phil Advisory Board, and he's author of a very specific book called Not My Child, a progressive and proactive approach to healing addicted teenagers and their families. Um, I asked him to fly in here from Dallas today because I wanted him to have a chance to meet y'all okay. and weigh in with this. I'm also going to give you a copy of that book. This is a step-by-step -step action plan prescription for how to work through that, that process. And this is Dr. Lawless right here, sitting here. Um, so, Frank, what, what do you want to say to this family? Well, if I could take Brianna and make her totally well to, in all aspects, and she went back to this family, she would go back the way she is now. Yeah. There are no skills here for her to model after. It's only this uh, blaming and lack of communication and this destructive uh, feature that is in the relationship. That's why the first thing I wrote down on my card is I don't ask myself why, I ask myself why not. She's set up to fail here at so many levels. Uh, neurologically, family-wise, uh, genetically, this is all going wrong. I, I'm not mad at you, hell, I'm on your side. I, I just want you to stop what you're doing. We're gonna take a break, when we come back, I'm gonna tell everybody exactly what I think they should do when we come back. Stop justifying your inactivity and avoiding the challenge of change. For help getting started, go to DrPhil.com for 11 seasons of advice, articles, and exclusive videos you won't find anywhere else. Plus, sign up for the Dr. Phil community to share your story and find support from others, all on DrPhil.com. There's so much that needs to go on here. It's just simply not a one-dimensional situation. The patient here is not Brianna. The patient here is this family unit, um, for sure. Um, uh, I, I want to do two things. You've, you've been in some treatment before with a different attitude. I, I, I want you to do it with and for me one more time in a very, very different way. You won't believe how different in a minute. but um, and. If, if that happens, um, you two need to go into some very intensive parent training, some very intensive uh, intervention into this family dynamic. I, I think you've got a drug addiction problem. I think you have a dysfunctional co-parenting definition for this child. And no matter what happens with her, if you don't change as much as she does, then 
you're just sabotaging her and setting her up for failure. Life is all about intention. And I have not one shred of doubt in my mind that you are well intended as a father. I have not one shred of doubt in my mind that that you are not a well intended mother. You've you've worked at it, you've done what you know how to do. You just don't have the coping skills. Right. And you have not understood yourself. And and you need a, an opportunity to do that. And I, I want you to and I want to do it with you, not to you. I, I want I, I asked the person sitting next to Frank Lawless there is, is Dr. Matt Polichek, who I also know extremely well. And he is the He's the medical director for the Center for Discovery, which is a structured therapeutic residential treatment center. And they've been at this for damn near two decades, working with troubled and out of control teens, but most importantly, their families. Doctor, don't you think she deserves a break here? Yeah, and what I've learned today, um, you know, the, the programs in the past have been about stabilizing in drug use, but um, that's not the only problem. We've got a, a you know, family issues and coping skills and self self esteem and building a healthy identity and it's a it's a bigger issue that we gotta to work through here, not just uh, drugs and alcohol. And I I want you to trust me enough to say, you know what, um, I, I'm willing to call time out, get myself sorted out, so I got a chance to make a run at my life. Will you do that for me? Yeah. So, um, um, you don't have to listen to me. This is this is a lot of this is going to be up to you. So just just take it one step at a time. That's all I'm saying. I'm not packing you off somewhere for a year. Or yeah. What, just keep an open mind. Take one step at a time. I, I think I think these people are going to begin to open up some vistas and understanding for you that you're going to go. Wow, I'm good to go. But you got to give me some time to get this sorted out here so they don't sabotage what's happening, okay? Yeah. All right, fair enough? Okay. All right, I want to thank all of my guests today. A special thanks to Dr. Frank Lawless, chairman of the Dr. Phil Advisory Board and author of Not My Child, a progressive and proactive approach for healing addicted teenagers and their families. And also to Matt Polichek from the Center for Discovery. Um, and a special thanks to Dr. Saba Huck uh, from Doctor on Demand uh, for assisting us today. And as I say, if you want your own Doctor on Demand, uh, go to Google Play or the App Store, download it, and you'll be all set up and fixed. And by the way, this Center for Discovery uh, is our gift to y'all. So this is not a financial burden Thank you very to much. you. Okay, fair enough. We'll see you next time. Today on an all-new Dr. Phil, a daughter happy with her habit. At age 13, you start doing heroin. A mother who enables her. You give her money knowing she's going to spend it on drugs. Is she a sucker? Oh, yeah. And a father who up and left her. I went six months. It's been a year and a half. I told you what happened. I told Did you... Did you come out here to lecture her or to figure out how to save her life? Because you bailed on her, buddy. Let's do it. I hate to see people suffering, and you've heard long enough. Stand by, Dr. Phil. Four seconds. Take We're going to get you the help that you need. Five, four, three. This is going to be a changing day in your life. The pictures that you are looking at of drug paraphernalia were proudly posted on Instagram by this young woman. 17-year-old Brianna says, so what? I'm not using major drugs, and she does not understand why her mother, Diane, is making such a big deal about her admitted use of Xanax, Molly, marijuana, PCP, heroin, and alcohol. 
Diane says her daughter used to be a star gymnast, but now excels in lying, running away, and taking drugs. At her wit's end, Diane recently stood before a judge to force Brianna into a youth shelter in an effort to scare her daughter straight. Let's listen to some of the audio of what happened on the ride over to that facility. You put me in these places for no reason. They're pointless. I don't need it. I want to do drugs. I'm going to do them. Just let me live my life. Shut up! Shut the up! Well, Brianna was released from the shelter last week, but Diane says her daughter hasn't changed not one bit. Take a look. My daughter, Brianna's out of control. Okay, you don't have anything to do with me, my mom. Shut the f up. My daughter drinks. She abuses drugs. She does not listen to authority. She is a chronic liar. She's a chronic runaway. Her drug use started in ninth grade, and it just got progressively worse over the years. She wasn't going to school, she was acting out, and she pulled a knife on my ex-husband. Over the last year, Brianna started dropping Molly, which is a pure form of ecstasy. She has dropped Xanax and drank on top of that, and it's just been a living hell for me. I found a lot of this stuff out by reading Brianna's journal, and then when I confronted her with it, she told me, yeah, that's exactly what I do. I had found out that Brianna was going to parties, sneaking out at night. Brianna had explained to me in detail how she did heroin. She told me she melted it, and then she shot it under her toenails. She drinks sometimes to the point where she blacks out. Brianna started having sex at the age of 14. She has slept with anybody from a 14-year-old all the way up to a 24-year-old, and she's only 17 years old. I asked Brianna who she's getting the money from to get the drugs, and she said to me, you don't need money to get drugs all the time. I would say she was doing sexual stuff, so she can get drugs for free. She has run away five times. Last week, Brianna went missing. I called the police. Brianna comes walking in the house, glassy-eyed, and the cop put her into a bear hug, and she was punching him and screaming, get off of me. They lifted her up to carry her out the door. She turns to me and goes, I hope you get killed in a car accident. She lives in and out of rehab. The judge ordered her to go to the shelter. And I turn to Brianna to say something. She goes, screams on the top of her lawn. Shut up! Shut the up! I feel like I have done everything for this girl, but nothing seems to work. I am at wit's end. Okay, you say you're at your wit's end, which I just have to tell you, I'm sorry that's not an option, but nonetheless, how serious do you take this? How serious do you think this is? Oh, uh, this is very serious. Uh, if I don't get help for her, she's going to die. Okay, gonna where die. have you been in all of this? She started smoking dope at 10? She says around 10 years old. Okay, where were you? I didn't know, I didn't see any signs, nothing until high school until high school. Okay, she was doing heroin at 13. This is what she says. She's well, a chronic liar. I understand. Liar. I'm just saying, do you, you don't believe her? No. So you don't think she was smoking dope at 10 and doing heroin at 13? No. What do you assess the risk to be right now to her? That she's going to die. She's going to die. Okay. She just doesn't, she doesn't get it. She wants me to let her live her life. But what I need to know is, do you? You're saying she doesn't get it. I want to know, do you get it? Because you don't act like you get it. I get it. That's why I'm here. Dr. Fell, I'm here. I, 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 there's nothing more I can do for her. I don't know what to do for her. Okay, 17-year-old Brianna says her mother is completely overreacting. Huh. I obviously disagree. I think she is completely underreacting. She says she's just living a partying lifestyle, and there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, this is what teens do. Let's hear what she has to say. When my parents got divorced, I always blamed myself. The most painful part was my dad was gone. I didn't see him for years. And that's why I blamed myself, that he didn't want to see me. I felt very abandoned because all of a sudden he was gone. I tried to take away the pain and I thought hanging myself would work, but I didn't want to die. I started smoking weed when I was 10. I started using heroin when I was 13. My behavior started to change totally, and I just got myself into trouble. I would fight with the teachers. I've hit the principal because I was on drugs. I've been having unprotected sex, but it's only with one person. But when I was 
doing heavier drugs, I would just sleep around. I laced my weed with angel dust, PCP, and took Molly at the same time. Mixing them together, I felt amazing. I wanted to punish my mom because it was her idea to get the divorce. So I did the drugs to get her mad while I'm being happy. I always say, I hate you. I hope you die. I do drugs because I love it. It's like a daily routine for me. It's what I do. And the way I look at it is, if you don't like what I do, don't bother with me. My mom always says I'm not ready to bury you yet. And it just, it gets me so mad. And I try to explain to her, I'm like, mom, I'm not gonna die. You think she's just being histrionic? Just overreacting? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's getting to the point where it's really, really frustrating and annoying. Really annoying for yes. her to parent you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So how do you feel about being here today? I think it's pointless, because I'm still going to go out and smoke weed. Okay. So no matter what I say or what I do, your attitude is you're going to just keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. Okay. Because, that, see, that's really important to me. And I'll tell you why that's important to me. Because I don't ask myself why you're doing what you're doing. I ask myself why not. I mean, I, I may be the only person in your life right now that has an appreciation for what all you've been through. Yeah. I, I get that. I really do. And I'm really sorry. But it's interesting to me for you to say, no matter what you do, I'm going to continue to do what I'm doing. Because that tells me where this game's going to be played. You know, you want to you raise it to that level? I'll meet you right there. I'd rather work with you like an intelligent young woman, but if you want to just bow up and put your little bitchy hat on, uh, just like, hell, I'm going to do what I want to do. I don't care what you people say. Uh, I'll, I'll match you step for step. I can stop like all the other drugs. I've been three years clean of heroin. Mm -hmm. And I don't need to do Molly. I don't need to do Xanax. But like, I can stop all that and just smoke weed. You say at age 10 you started smoking marijuana, mm -hmm. right? Okay, at age 13, you started doing heroin. Mm -hmm. At age 16, you started doing PCP. You, you laced marijuana with it. You, you sprinkle mm -hmm. it in there and then, and then do it. You currently smoke five to 10 joints a day? Yeah. Uh, you take three or four Xanax a day? Mm, only on the weekends, but I haven't done that. Okay, and on weekends, that's when you do the, the ecstasy, the molly? Yeah. Uh, you drink? Yeah. You say you drink four or five beers a day? Not a day. If I go to a party or something, yeah, I'm going to drink. Yeah. Sometimes some vodka? Mm-hmm. Yeah. How are you doing in school? I don't know. I get home instruction. I'm not getting it done right now. Why did you do that? Because a lot of her problems were happening in the high school. Uh -huh. She go to the high school. She, I got a call. She brought beer to school. I mean, I couldn't have her being in that high school anymore, so I took her out. You thought the the thing to do here is we'll just stop education. No, 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 no. Take her out of the school and have her home instruction, have home instruction put into place. Because you say she went in this homeschool program, but from what I understand it, it was like she'd blow it off, say, I don't want to do this. I confronted her about it, and she was like, oh, I just didn't feel like going, or I'm done. I'm just so done with all of this. D is she a sucker? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I don't... <laughs> No, I, it was an honest answer. You, you sucker her, right? You yeah. manipulate her. Mm -hmm. She's very manipulative. Brianna's father says his inability to be 100% in Brianna's life is not entirely his fault. So we're going to add him to the conversation when we come back. Brianna just turned into a complete nightmare. She threatened to kill me. She said she would actually stab me. At that time, if she did have a knife, and being that she was on drugs, she probably would have stabbed me. And later, she says you're a flat-out racist and that you were using the N-word and being derogatory about someone because of their race. Don't no. give me that. You guys can all go f*** yourselves. Monday on an all-new Dr. Phil.
grabbed him, choked me, slammed me. You know exactly how I'm going to react. His rage is destroying their family. You said that you do hit the kids, but I don't kick across the room. Is he a bully? I don't have a perfect memory of what happened. Do you remember anything? Because everything I've asked you, I don't recall. I'm not sure. Or do they both love the drama? He'll punch you or hit you or slap you. 15 minutes later, you're cuddling up on the couch watching TV. That's Monday. says her 17-year-old daughter, Brianna, thinks it's no big deal to do marijuana, molly, heroin, and prescription drugs. Now, Brianna has run away at least five times, and now things are so bad that her mom says she checks dumpsters looking for her daughter's dead body. Diane says her ex-husband, Michael, abandoned his daughter after the divorce, and she feels that contributed to her daughter's downward spiral. So let's hear what Michael has to say. Brianna is way out of control with her drug use. Brianna has a lot of anger because uh, 